Hello and welcome to my 3D printer upgrade series. Converting Tronc CX5 SA to a decent printer. This time around I want to show you a bunch of upgrades that you can do to make it better. Main one will be Triple Z, otherwise known as Kinematic Bed, Quad Gantry which means 4 motors and 48 volt power supply. Main reason I'm doing this in a single video is because quad gantry and 48 volt was really simple and it really doesn't deserve a separate video just to talk about it. Triple Z was more involved, however I did not record it, making it myself as putting it together was actually the easiest part of it. I can still show you on a finished product how to make it. Let's start from the easiest of the bunch, which is 48V conversion. You can technically power every single motor in your printer with 48V, as long as you have a motherboard and the stepper motor drivers that can support it and will not blow up with a higher voltage. For example, TMC5160. I've gotten myself an Octopus Pro which I covered in a previous video if you want to know more about it. So to make this conversion you obviously need a 48 volt power supply capable of at least 350 watts. This should be more than enough to power 4 stepper motor drivers and give them about 1.5 amps each. Obviously if you want to push it further you want a bigger one but I have found 350 watts to be a sweet spot between price and performance. Arguably more important is that you should get yourself something from a reputable brand, let's say Meanwell, because if this thing blows up, it will take everything else with it. Not to mention bad power supplies are fire hazards and fire is the last thing you want to see on 3D printer. You will still need 24 volt power supply because the vast majority of electrical stuff on 3D printer needs to have 24 volts. For example, heaters, fans and the motherboard itself. Using step down converter is also a possibility, but it would need to be a beefy one and you would need to have more power on your 48 volt. Since I already had a power supply, I bought a new one, attached to the mains voltage and output to the motherboard as motor power. This allows me to select the first four stepper drivers to be powered with it, while everything else is still being powered from the old PSU. And this is it when it comes to conversion to higher voltage. As for the results, I honestly don't see any difference. Perhaps if I pushed it past 20k accelerations maybe I would notice it, but so far it behaves exactly like before. Moving to the second upgrade, which is Quad Gantry, otherwise known as all-wheel drive. I personally don't think AWD is the correct term, so I won't be using it. Second upgrade was a bit more involved, however still fairly easy to do. In order to convert VZBot to Quad Gantry, you will obviously need 4 stepper motors. I would argue that they should be the same in order to have everything synchronized, so I have bought a kit from Stepper Online, which I will link in the description below. They are a little longer than the stock Tronxy motors, but I have not seen any issues with the clearance so far. I bought 5 of them, so I have a spare one in case one of them fails. Aside from the Stepper motors, you will need to print 4 plastic pieces to replace the front idlers. You can download them from the VisiBot repository, but I will link it in the description below so we know exactly which ones. I also have to mention that there are aluminum kits available for you to purchase. Perhaps, maybe in the future I will buy them myself. One thing to note is that most hardware from the old idlers will be compatible, except for four shoulder bolts, two on each side, two M4 nuts, two motor GT pulleys, and two idler pulleys without teeth. Everything else was reused from the old idlers. Currently I have inserted two M5 screws instead of the shoulder boards 
but this really isn't advice, so I will be replacing them once I find a local supply. In order to do this conversion, all you need to do is to take off your front idlers and insert your new motor mount from the bottom. You won't need to undo your belts because quad gantry requires shorter belt, so it should simply fit. You will need to tighten it up again once you route the belt in the correct order as it will be a bit loose. Clipper configuration will also be necessary but it was relatively straightforward. All you need to do is to add X1 and Y1 configuration sections. I will attach it in the description below my configuration. Last step would be to make sure that they are all in sync and to do that you basically need to confirm that stepper X and stepper X1 are from the opposing corners. Same for the Y and Y1. As for the results I can confirm that now I don't have any skipped steps because the belt and the gantry are so powerful it will knock out the bat rather than skip a step. Is it good or bad? I don't really know. It's for you to decide. I was also able to push 20k accelerations effortlessly, so that's definitely an improvement. One thing to note is that my previous belt, which was cheapest one I found, did not hold up. It stretched out and nearly snapped. I've replaced it with a Gates belt and so far no issues. That being said, the old drive belt held for nearly a year with 10k axles, so if that's your goal, cheap belts should be probably able to handle that fine. But then again, you won't need 4 stepper motors if you're only aiming for 10k. Last but not least is the Triple Z, otherwise known as Kinematic Bat. This is in my opinion by far the most useful upgrade to the 3D printer you can make. As for why, stick till the end. It is not cheap. I paid around 200 bucks for everything, including hardware. Most of it was from the Ratrick store and the hardest part was to gather everything I will need. Assembling it all together was the easy part. This is a mod that was designed by a user named PBSuper from VZBot Discord, so all credits go to him. That being said, I ended up modifying two things. First was to make sure that I have access to the rail screws on the back mounting arm, which was basically making holes in the model so that I can reach it with an Allen key. And the second change was to convert threaded inserts to all the way through screw holes, with a hex nut on the other side, simply because I did not have heated inserts. To keep magnets in the place, hex nuts should do just fine. I have compiled a list of what is required to make this modification, which I will link in the description below. Keep in mind that there are multiple versions, so triple check before printing something. For example, there is a version for 12C and 12H carriage. In this video I will be covering my version, so if you want to follow that, you need to make sure to buy the same parts I did. If you have any doubts, I strongly recommend joining a Discord and asking questions before buying stuff. So let's get started. The core of this mod is 3 linear rails, 500mm long and 3 lead screws of the same length. Supposedly you should be using 450 long lead screws, however I have found that this is way too short and my bed wouldn't breach the nozzle. So in the worst case scenario you would just need to cut them a bit, which is possible, as opposed to adding length. Obviously you will need something to suspend your bed on it, and this mod uses the Ratrick style steel balls that slides on two dowels while are being held down by magnets. That makes it easy to purchase most things from the one store. Now depending on what bed you have, you may also need to have some kind of spacers for the steel balls. I have cut some aluminium spacers to around 20 mm. If you are still using stock trunk seabed, this might be an issue because it's far from flat. Ideally you should be getting something like machined 8mm thick piece of cast aluminium and this may introduce a new problem which is bed sliding down by itself due to its weight. This could be fixed by getting nuts with a backlash compensation. It is pretty hard to put them together 
but it works very well. For this mod you will only need 6 printed parts, 3 of them being arms and 3 of them motor mounts on the very bottom. Speaking of motors, make sure you have sufficient amount of them, because even if you have 2 motors on the gantry, that makes it a total of 5. 6 if we count the extruder. They don't need to be powerful or even high quality, but they should be all the same. I'm using new motors on the gantry and stock Tronxy motors for the triple Z. Assembling motor mounts is really easy. You basically need to put all the screws that, that are attaching it to the aluminum extrusions, alongside with the T-nuts. After attaching them to corners of your printer, simply screw down the motor from the bottom using the short M3 screws with the cap heads. Make sure that the back motor is perfectly in the center. This will also be a good time to attach aluminum extrusion to the back. You have multiple options to attach it. You can either use blind joints from your old bed, or like me, print corner joints. If you are using VisiBot feet from your printer, you may need to modify the front ones. I did it with an angle grinder, but I will also attach my STL files if you want to simply reprint them. Assembling arms is a bit involved, but it's still very easy. I suggest starting from attaching the lead screw nut and screwing it with a short M3 screws, while a tightening down with an M3 nuts from the other side. Orientation does not matter. After that, use a drill with 3mm bead to make sure that the dowel holes are accurate, otherwise you may have issues with inserting them. If you are using the original version and intend to use heat inserts, you will need to poke out the thin layer with something sharp. Let me show you how it looks on the slicer. Now it will be a good time to heat press threaded inserts. If you want to use my version that uses simple screws and nuts from the bottom, you will still need to poke out this thin layer because of the way it's printed. Once you are done with it, Grab the magnet, it should go inside without any issues. Screw it down either to the heat insert or to the bottom hex nut. Start carefully inserting dowels from the side. I would suggest not inserting them all the way because if your part does not fit or there are some issues with it, you will have a hard time getting it out. I have left around 3mm sticking out and I intend to keep it that way just in case something fails. Now would be a good time to screw down the linear rails. If you have quad gantry you will need to disassemble front motors, because otherwise you won't be able to screw down the rail to the very top. If you have a normal double gantry you should be able to simply screw the rail without disassembling anything. You also don't need to use every single hole to keep it bolted. I am using every two screws. Something like that. That being said, I still suggest getting a pack of 100 M3 by 8 screws, it will be most likely cheaper than buying them individually. As for the other screws, I was able to salvage most of them from the old Z axis, except for M3 T nuts. Once you have rails attached, it is time to attach arms to the lead screws and then lead screws to the motors using flexible couplers. This is rather easy and you shouldn't be having any issues with it, except for the back arm which, in original form, does not have access to the top screws. So I have modified this part and put two holes on the sides. You will still need an allen key with the ball, but this way it was a breeze to screw it down. I will link my modification in the description below. Last step would be to simply putting down the bed on the dowels. It is not held by anything else, so it just slides freely. Magnets keep it in a position. Clipper configuration is rather simple. You need to define three stepper motors Z, Z1 and Z2. Make sure to remember the order. For example, for me Z is a back motor, Z1 is the left motor and Z2 is the right motor. You will need it for the Z tilt section. Positions there have to be in the same order. 
As for the result, well, this is astonishing, but ever since I've made this modification, I don't need to align the bed anymore. It simply works every time. I had some issues because my bed is a DIY version, but if you have a proper bed, you shouldn't have them. Biggest problem I was having before was simply touching the bed and misaligning it. Since I'm pretty impatient, I want to take off the print as soon as it's done and don't want to wait until it cools off and pops out by itself. It is inevitable that in this case, after some time, the bed has to be realigned again. With triple Z, this is no longer the case. Problem does not exist anymore. I simply press the button and everything is aligned as it was before, even with a slightly crooked bed. I had the same issues on my bed slinger and I figured that this time around I want to have something foolproof, as it has begun to tire me. So for me this mod is 10 out of 10, couldn't recommend more. This will be it for today's video, if you have any questions, I am available on Visibot Discord, but you can ask questions in the comments down below as well.